So here's your first layer. Let's sort of throw some flash of beer in there. Some lateral scale and some mirage, a little bit of everything. <laughs> oh, let's talk about this thing because it's useful. So this is a material stager. Um, all it is is a fancy wooden block with some heavy duty foam and some slits cut in it. Like you can go to just Hobby Lobby, buy two things of balsa and put some sheet foam in the middle and cut your own. Like, I just had a guy made me one because again, fancy wooden tool. <laughs> um, and it's even if you don't production tie, you don't, it's easy to go overboard with this stuff because it's super bright. Um, this stuff and the Mirage. So I typically would just use a couple strains of this. Well, there's three. That works. And then I go a little bit heavier on. I love this color. This is a. Uh, this is like Hollow Sunset or something like that. <laughs> it's a hippie name. Totally. <laughs> moon rice. Moon. They, I think they have a moon moonlight one too. <laughs> all right. So we got all these kind of the same length. Just gonna double them over our tying thread like that. Set it right on top and wrap back over it. That's how easy that is. Then it's done. Are you taping your tips on those? I am. I'm gonna tie another section of this and then just taper it all at once. They're already kind of tapered because I didn't really mess with tying in the, uh, uh, or evening out everything. Take one more strand of this. Over again. Dude, I like that, how that works. The yeah, guy in the Ozarks makes this thing. That's just a hollow fly style yeah. you're saying? Okay. So there's your tail. It's pretty bulky, so let's cut some of it out. Nice to meet you, man. You got some good work. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Thanks for coming, man. You too. Let's put that ticket. Yeah. Check it out when he's. Cool. Yeah. Same thing like you do with like a pig. It's a dog hair, Cole. <laughs> Go to Petco, get you a metal flea comb. Metal's good, plastic's not good. Uh, bone is okay. Uh, plastic generates static, which makes everything frizz. Metal's fine. So you just. The plastic I, one's also break. The plastic one's also break. I broke this metal one somewhere. Yeah. Just comb all this stuff out. To, See how it looks. It's got a decent taper to it. All right, that'll be our back. So everything else will be craft for in flash. So I'm going to move up to about right there. And ooh, came out. Um, this is just a pack of cream. We'll do a little rainbow trout one. This is worth the price of admission. This is the next tip. You work with craft fur, a lot of people want to do this, so they want to cut it out like that. Turn it upside down, cut the backing like that, and then you know every time... <laughs> Dude, seriously? <laughs> I can hear the wheels turning, man. Turn it upside down, and then you know every time you tie a piece in exactly how much you're getting. I should be. I know. <laughs> Buddy showed me this. It's not my idea. Man. I'll take credit for it though. <laughs> like in <laughs> you know it's yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> I felt dumb the first time I saw it. I was like, why didn't I think of that? Um So I just take it right at the backing. I said I and just cut that piece off because you got all this crap in here you don't want because it just weighs it down. That's where the other side of the dog brush comes in. You're brushing out the guard hairs? Yep. <laughs> the, the guard hairs of, <laughs> of the Muppet. Cut it flat. Face it forward like this. Kind of hold it loosely and spread it over the hook. Loose wraps. That's your first layer. Take this piece, go back like that. That pen trick is... Here's your first piece. 
Do a little cone. I'll probably, yeah, I'll do one more white one. So I move, every time I tie a piece of craft fur in, I tie, I move halfway up the hook point. Because you want your, the back of the fly to be sparse, and you want the front of the fly to be more compact to where the tail kind of dances and the head pushes water, and then you end up with the head being slower than the tail, and then when you strip it real fast and it comes to a hard stop, it kind of jackknifes like that. And that's what, that's a big trigger, especially for pike. Um, to be able to get them to eat a fly. I'm yeah. throwing crap for everywhere. Whatever you so same step again. Looks so like a struggling to survive trout or something. Yeah, it's just it just it's erratic and it kind of darts through the water and looks all nice and. Uh, <coughs> Fishing plans being made over there. I know. Not in prison yet. What's up, Cubby? Come geek out with us. So there's the second layer. Now we'll start doing some some color transitions. This is uh, a medium olive. You don't want quite as much. No, This is a little too big, so I'm going to cut this piece off. And cut your backing off again. This is going to be your belly, since it's white. And then we're moving halfway up again, so right there. <laughs> to your half of whatever hook half shank Half of whatever is, is left. Okay. That's, a good place for you. That's your belly. This is your back. This piece kind of sucks. It's not very long. Pop it back. In traditional hollow tying, like you just make a thread dam in front of this, but I'm lazy. <laughs> and this stuff flares out enough on its own. Like it's more in your traditional hollow tie with bucktail where you're trying not to compress it too much. This stuff you can cheat. There's that. Alright. Fun part. More fun. So this is where I'll put the flash, more flash in. Um, you were asking how much. You can always cut flash out. Um, if you're getting fish, if you feel like you're turning fish off because of flash. I don't know if I've ever done that with, typically I'm throwing this, this style of fly in like the Colorado River below Austin, not the same Colorado River you guys have, um, oddly enough. So I, I tend to go a little bit heavier on the flesh because we're also going to mute it by tying in another piece right here. So do the back first, which is, this is all ripple ice. I do a little pinch of peacock, a little pinch of olive, and just kind of put them in like that. Ooh. For the belly, it's just this minnow mix stuff, or they have like a pearl. And I go ahead and push these back. Because what I'm going to do now is tie in the cheeks. This is the like funky fluorescent one. Yeah, how do you like that stuff? It's a little stiffer and I like it for, I don't like it by itself, I like it like with with the rest of the stuff, it's mm -hmm. not good on its own. It's not, it doesn't have any flash to it, it's just color. It's like a, uh, and it's, it's, it? it's a different. It's like fiber optic. To me. Yeah. It's like how it lights up. So again, this is where this kind of material prepper thing is fairly handy. 
to take a hunk of that. I don't use much of this because it's already pretty bright. That's maybe 14. seven or eight. Yeah, 14.5 centimeters. <laughs> Pop that in there, and then this is the like shrimpy pink color. And you can go a little heavier with this since it's not too bright. Right on the side. Again, right on the side. Like that. All right. <coughs> Just brush it. You're going to break some of the stuff off. It's not a big deal. And like if you have one that's kind of funky like that one, just cut it off. Alright, last section. This is a golden olive. Like a freaking pile of materials here. We used to have one. I don't know if still here. Nah, don't worry about it. It's like gigantic. It's like three times the size of this one. <laughs> Uh, you'll see why. So we're right up. I'm not worried about it. Don't worry about it. So you just want to leave a little bit of butt section there sticking out. And it helps form the head. Oh, okay. The head is the secret. So it helps like... You'll see. You'll see. <laughs> That's the other trick on this fly is forming the head. Also not my idea. Uh, Andreas Anderson from Sweden showed me this. His version of the craft for bait fish is like little, kind of small and sleek. And mine's like an abomination. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna whip finish here. You're whip finishing over. Over your thread wraps? Nope. Okay. Doesn't have to be perfect. That's the finished fly. Not really. I mean, it is, but we're not going to tie anymore. Alright. This is where it gets fun. I always like this part. That's how it's going to look. have to have UV stuff for this. Go all the way around. Doesn't have to be much. In fact, you don't want it much. You just want it to coat just the top. And then you can control how big of a head you want. If you want a real sleek back, just keep it like that. But if you don't, push it up. Hit it with that. There you go. It's another secret. <laughs> I'll have an invoice for you guys on the way out. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Five bucks a secret. Non-disclosure yeah. agreements. Shoot, I don't have any secrets. <laughs> you ever tried using any of the flex stuff for a head? Yes, you can use the flex stuff. I just don't use the flex stuff because Loon doesn't make flex stuff. Um, <laughs> and I like Loon stuff because it's like totally non-toxic. And if I'm working with it every day for the rest of my life. Um, all right. Let's do, we'll do marker first dies. The marker's easy, just. Is there any special marker trick? Oh. Just dab it in there. Little, little dollop will do you. No, don't you dare do that again. <laughs> get up and walk out of here. <laughs> A few dots. Like, I mean, you could sit here, it's like trimming a deer hair fly. You could sit here and dot it for hours, but cool. that's Got plenty. Um, all right, eyes. I love this stuff. This is a fabric glue, it's liquid fusion. Um, it's like liquid shrink wrap. Um, the downside is you have to wait for it to dry. I like Flyman's eyes a lot, as you can tell by the sheets and sheets and sheets of them I have. 
So, I like my eyes right at the front. Right there, both sides. All right. Liquid shrink wrap. Yeah, so it needs to dry overnight, but it's it's the business. Thought I brought some bigger eyes. All right, I usually use bigger eyes than this on this one, but. Got really quiet again. No, because you're placing the eyes. Please don't breathe. Yeah. Make sure, make sure they're exactly even. Mm -hmm. I don't worry about that just yet. All right, now you worry about it. Oh man, that was cross-eyed. <laughs> Once you get them kind of where you want them, and it is important to have them as close to exact as you can because it affects how the fly swims. If you have it one different than the other, it's going to and sometimes that's fine. All right, so I hold them there for a few seconds. And I let it go. And look at them again. They look pretty good. The final thing. All right, so don't go buy these from like Hobby Lobby. Go to like the dollar store and just buy some wooden clothespins. And you just go and let it dry like that. Uh, the skinny head because it's so skinny, that makes it walk through the water. And then you can come back if you want to, and you can overcoat it with this stuff again to give it all like shrunk in, or you can come back and do it with like tear mender or UV or anything.